question, not from a first-class space program backed by a fourth-rate economy, as we did with the Soviet Union, but by a first-class space program backed by a first-rate economy, uh, to which we owed a great deal of money. Uh, and the, uh, so uh, I, I hope it doesn't go that way. I mean, I, uh, I'd welcome uh, an Olympic-style international competition for uh, sending humans to Mars. I think the competitive spirit is healthy. Uh, and, and, and more productive than if we all agree to merge our space programs into one bureaucratic effort which would go as slow as it wants. Um, but uh, basically, um, uh, I think that, um, just a couple things. One is that the United States should try to go to Mars. If other people want to go to Mars, and, and if, frankly, if we could encourage others to compete with us, and therefore we get three or four major space efforts, Europe, Russia, China, perhaps India, uh, doing this, and we get uh, a, uh, a multiplicity of new branches of human civilization uh, going on Mars, I, I think that'd be a very healthy development. Um, but uh, uh, I don't want to wait until um, we are, are, are dragged into this from a, a second class point of view. Um, and uh, I guess that, that's my answer to your question. All right, let me take other questions. If I might just ask, do you see the Chinese program going somewhere, or what is the status on that? Chinese space program may eventually go somewhere. Uh, it, it may not, okay? You know, there's problems in China. Uh, the the one-child policy threatens China's future uh, um, because they're going to move into a situation where they're, they're, they have more retirees than workers and, and so forth. And, and, but if they can get past that, and, and, and who knows? But it could happen. Uh. Um, you, you talked about the issue of uh, having a garage full of technologies and parts. It seems to me that's actually the situation we've been in for decades now, where, where NASA has this accumulated garage of collected 40 years of facilities and employees and you know, uh, office buildings. and. When, when Apollo was done, NASA didn't have this overhead, you know. Um, I think perhaps uh, the society should take the bold step of saying that uh, the NASA budget should be cut by about a third until and unless we actually decide to go somewhere and have a big garage sale. Um, <laughs> and, and so, uh, sort of try to recreate the conditions for human spaceflight that we had uh, back in 1962 where you didn't have this uh, six and a half billion dollars of overhead. And uh, I know it's a risky proposition, but I, I think it actually might um, be acceptable politically today to say, look, you know, why waste this money um, maintaining something that doesn't do anything? Well, there's a certain, uh, um, actually, uh, well, you've made the case yourself. Uh, there's a certain reasonable argument for such a proposition. Another form that that has been advanced is that what we ought to have is a new agency created around this mission. Okay, that is that its mission is to send humans to Mars. It has no other mission. Just as, I mean, there were certain other things in NASA during the Apollo period, but fundamentally it was built around the Apollo mission. Uh, and, uh, you know, if, if you had that, well, I think that would be the necessary precondition for doing what you say. You know, to cut, if you were to cut, eliminate, I wouldn't want to eliminate NASA's human space flight program and then hope that someone at sub subsequent date would create um, a mission. Uh, I would want to establish, a, 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 you know, like the SDI, a, 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 a mission-driven agency that say, this is our mission, and then they could take into them, as NASA took into itself, the Von Braun group and various other groups that they thought would be useful, and consolidate that, and then those that were not found useful, perhaps, um, 
could be phased down. Uh, once again, I, I don't think this is a question of money. I mean, it, it should be evident that, you know, if you talk about a Humans to Mars program, okay, I, I believe it was done this way, you're talking about doing something that could be done for an order of $50 billion over 10 years. And, uh, you know, th this government over the past two years spent something like $2,000 billion on expenditures that hadn't been on anybody's planning chart uh, before September 2008. And I said, well, you need $800 billion for this? Okay, here it is. Uh, and, um, you, know, uh, you know, they spent four times as much bailing out AIG in an afternoon as, as would be needed to send humans to Mars. Um, and um, the, the, so it's not a question of money. So the, the, the issue of, to me, the fundamental problem with NASA running a $10 billion a year human spaceflight program and accomplishing nothing over the next 10 years is not that they're wasting $10 billion a year, but that they're wasting the years, okay? Um, that, you know, that kind of money, uh, the feds throw down the sinkhole every which way all the time and, and, and no one even knows about it. But, it's that we just go another decade, and, and once again, the longer this stretches out, the more distant and unattainable the, the, the goal appears to be, the more impossible the goal appears to be. You know, when Apollo was fresh in our minds, during Apollo, NASA had plans to send humans to Mars by 1981, and it seemed completely credible. And it was completely credible. They could have done it, okay? Uh, now, you know, even going to the moon in 2004, said, well, maybe this is something we can do in 16 years, when it only took eight the first time. Uh, you know, starting from a nation that had not yet invented the push-button telephone. Um, and the, the, the uh, okay, so, uh, anyway.